Uh, yes, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Dr. Azuson, can you hear me? Unmute yourself and let's see. Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Dr. Azuson, you spoke, but I could not hear you. Dr. Yes. Holmes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Can okay, you hear good. Me? Yes, I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Okay. Now we are. Program due to technical hitches that uh, we have less control over. But all the same, we are about to start. And thank you so much for joining us. Today, we are discussing another interesting and important topic, romantic heartbreaks and loss. Strategies for dealing with its mental health implications. Often than not, uh, we get into romantic relationships, hoping that it will be sweet and nice, all rosy, with all the happy endings. But then again, things do happen that the relationship end on the rocks, which symbolizes the difficulty and the hardness that it ends on the rocks. And that can be painful, leading to heartbreaks for one or both partners. Uh, today we are discussing that issue and how we can help others or ourselves should we find ourselves in that situation. So once again, we are most welcome. Um, by way of housekeeping rules, the age right has not changed. We are going to discuss mental health. So when you get the opportunity to make a comment, suggestion, or ask a question, be as sensitive as you can. Uh, those who join us, immediately you join us or ask during the program, make sure that your microphone is off. Your microphone is off so that it does not interrupt the whole session. Then when we get to the question and answer session, as usual, raise your hand and I would ask you to unmute to make your submission. We have a helpline that we provide psychological first aid. And so the number is 0800-678-678. If you have an issue or somebody close to you, I encourage that person to call the helpline to seek for support. The number is, again is 0800-678-678. So we have an interesting topic to discuss. And uh, we have some good facilitators to also share their perspectives about it. This is a, a topical issue. It's an everyday thing that we go through. Uh, as we grow old, for some of us, we have experienced some of these things. But when we are young, we we experience a lot of them, the bouncing and all that. We experience all of them. So uh, we've grown tough skin to some of these things. But it's a tough issue that uh, for some, they cannot. In fact, uh, consequences have been there. They break down. Some 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 hurt, physically hurt. Their partners who have jilted them, some threatened to die by suicide, some lose focus in life, and a whole lot, some family breakdown as a result of this romantic heartbreaks and all that. So we are going to delve into that. And I have some good facilitators to do that. Um, first and foremost, let me introduce Dr. Rita Holm Ajovi. She is a counselor as well as a senior lecturer at the University of Cape Coast. Hello, Rita, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Doc. Good afternoon, everyone. Good, good. Thank you for coming. Welcome. Secondly, we have Dr. E. E. Azuson. He is a clinical psychologist as well as a psychiatrist at the Accra Psychiatric Hospital. Hello, Dr. Azuson. How are you doing today? Hello, Dr. Atta. Um, I'm doing very well. Good, uh, good. Thank you for coming. We also have Dr. 
Isaac Newman Arthur. He is a medical director as well as a, a clinical psychologist at the University UPSA uh, Medical Center. Uh, he's, as you can see, he's on the screen now. And he's out of the country somewhere in a train. That's one day I know. <laughs> Hi, can you hear me loud and clear? Yeah, I can. Thank you. Okay. Okay, good, good, good. We also have uh, Ms. Enyonam Nube, uh, Nube Mado, a clinical psychologist at the Pantine Hospital. Madam Enyonam, are you with us? Merci, merci. Abugri, please mute yourself. Eh? Madam Enyanam, can you hear me? How are you today? Yes, I can hear you. I'm here. Good, good. Thank you for coming. Okay, so in, in fact, to relate to what we are going to discuss, I just decided to go on the net and look for a few quotations that we could we could relate to heartbreak. And I found a few of them. Let me share a few with you. And I said, this one is from Christy Brinkley. She said, I would rather have a broken arm than a broken heart. I would rather have a broken arm than a broken heart. And this, uh, this is quite interesting. Uh, another one from Julia Roberts. She's a film actor. She said, I wish I were a little girl again because skinned knees are easier to fix than a broken heart. I wish I were a little girl again because skinned knees are easier to fix than a broken heart. So, I mean, from these two quotations, we can tell what broken heart, how difficult it is. But Rita, briefly, briefly, Tell us what when we, in our in our all day everyday activities when we say uh, symptoms to that you can share that with us. Okay, thank you. And um, so let me start on a light note. Broken heart means a heart that is broken. <laughs> Um, and we know that the heart, the heart is what keeps us going. Without the heart, we can't breathe. So if the heart is broken, it means the person cannot breathe. The person is um, living but not alive. But on a serious note, when we talk about broken heart, um, we are referring to the the emotional, the physical, um, or psychological impacts that somebody experiences because the there is an end to a relationship or I mean, there's a loss of a significant person in, in the person's life. So the person experiences intense sadness um, or grief because of whatever um, feelings that the person is experiencing. And you ask for physical symptoms. Yeah, there are many physical um, symptoms. Some one is sleep disturbances because they are not happy. They are experiencing ex extreme sadness. They cannot sleep. They try to sleep and sleep is not coming their way. But some may experience um, issues with appetite. So um, maybe some may even overeat because of um, experiencing heartbreak. And others may not eat, and some some may not have the appetite to eat. So some will do what we call comfort eating, eating just to be examined. They want to find comfort in the food they are eating, and so on. Some may even experience um, headaches or all kinds of um, uh, what medical symptoms, stomach problem, muscle tension, and um, all because of the pain that they feel from the, the broken heart. Some will say, my heart is paining me. And usually they are referring to the chest pain that they feel because of um, 
the pain of the loss. So it can be for some um physically, um they, they may choose or not look good. I mean, I've met people who won't even comb their hair. Um they don't care about how they look anymore because they think the source, the person for whom they wanted to look good for is no longer in their life. So they don't care about how their hair looks, the type of clothes they are wearing. They will want to stay indoors and all of that. And I mean, in terms of feelings, some people may experience anger. Anger with themselves for maybe any role they may have played in the breakup happening or anger with allowing themselves to in quotes be fooled up to the point um, at which the relationship ended. Some will feel very lonely. Um, although relationship doesn't cure loneliness, being with a partner means you have somebody to share Unfortunately, some people even have um, suicidal thoughts. And um, there's a lot of guilt, um, especially if you think you play the role, a significant role in allowing the breakup to happen. Even for the person who initiates the breakup, sometimes they feel guilty for even saying it or regrets for saying it. Some people may experience um, what? confusion, what's wrong with me? Why is this happening to me? And so on and so forth. Let me leave it here. I think we'll say more. Yes, as thank you on. very much. At this point, at least we know what uh, heartbreak is, we know what loss is, what the common uh, feelings that are expressed are in the physical pain. Now, uh, our purpose of this program is to provide help for, for those who experience it and so the help would come in two ways. What those of us on the other side of this, watching a friend, a colleague experiencing heartbreak, go through what we can do to help that individual or what that individual can do to help themselves. That is the essence of this seminar. So Ike, let me ask you, I noticed that a friend is experiencing that heartbreak and loss. How do I communicate to demonstrate support for that person, to empathize with my friend. How do I communicate with him? I can you hear me? Yeah. Hello. Yes, I can hear you, Ike. It's a bit bad, so I didn't hear what you said. Can you repeat it for me, please? I'm saying that I noticed that a friend, somebody close to me, is experiencing heartbreak and loss. How do I communicate with that individual to express support, to demonstrate support, to empathize with that person so that the pain could, could be relieved? Uh, hey, it's time. Papa Dali. Things I would want to suggest. The first is that the person would have to recognize that it is it is a normal thing. It is okay for them to feel pain and uh, feel disappointed. It is those things. Benny, Benny Bass, Benny Bass, please mute yourself. So if someone feels I, I know your network would give us issues today. Hey, let me. Dr. Azuson, are you there to jump in now? Yes, I am here. Good. Please take over for me. Um, so with regards to um, how to speak to how somebody. To, yes, how to communicate. I'm, 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 even ask the question why. Because okay. no much human response to things. I think it's back. Okay. Yes. I he 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 just informed me that he was in a train outside of Ghana. So uh, he's trying to get out of the train. <laughs> so, outside of Ghana. 
if you are in the train. It has to be obviously outside of Ghana. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Azusan, please take over. Please take over. How do we how do we communicate and relate with such an individual? Yes. So uh first of all, uh what I would want to say is that uh I mean heartbreak is real. Heartbreak truly can present with very physical symptoms and psychological symptoms. Uh, but since this is a deliberation and you want to, uh, I'm asking to a specific question. You need to, first of all, acknowledge what the person is feeling. Normalize it. Normalize it. Oh, Dr. Atta, I understand you. You know, um, it is normal. And a lot of people who go through this, they, 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 they experience some of the symptoms that you are experiencing. Normalize what the person is going through and then empathize with the person. A lot of the times, you know, if somebody has a heartbreak, it is important you listen to the person. You need to what? Listen to the person and ask open-ended questions. You know, in psychotherapy, when you are listening to somebody, 50% of the problem is always gone. And that's why we always say that a problem that is shared is a problem that is what? Half solved. And so, uh, if you ask the person for people, allow... I, I, you are on hold for now. Dr. Azusa has taken over from you, so hold on for now. Yeah, so Dr. Okay, Asa, I, I, was, I was continuing from where you stopped. Okay, so if you allow the person to express him or herself, what technically we would call catharsis. A little So what we call catharsis. So the person is bringing it out. The person is taking out all the anger. And that alone helps the person to what? To feel a form of relief. Because heartbreak causes a lot of tension within the person. And so talking it out helps the person to what? To relieve him or herself of the symptoms. Secondly, allowing the person to talk out the problem and all the things that the person has done, all the mistakes I have done, everything. Also, unconsciously, within the person, the, person, the mind begins to generate solutions the mind begins to generate ways in which you can deal with the heartbreak. So that is very, very important. So you need to let the person what speak out and don't say that. Way of speaking out, the person's way of relieving the tension is to cry out, mama, ye, mama, ye, mama, ye. We allow the person to what? To cry mama, ye, and relieve the tension. Then again, while the person is speaking, you need to what? Actively listen to the person. You need to actively listen to the person. A lot of people do not understand that in psychotherapy, what you are thinking in your head sometimes reflects and the person, it rubs off on the person who is listening to you. Not, so, to, not to catch you, not to catch you, Dr. Azusong. Yeah. You are going to learn psychotherapy. Yeah. The layman has not gone to learn psychotherapy. So you yeah. are giving examples that we, the layman, we can do. So that's... <laughs> yes, so that's what I'm saying. That. So, yes. So what I'm saying is that, so if, for instance, Dr. Atta is listening to the person, mm. the kind of thoughts you are thinking about in your head, it rubs off the person. That's so right. you can be listening to the person and say, ah, but we'll cry, we'll cry. in your mind, mm. cry, we'll cry. But, but see this boy, how can you even go out to this particular boy? Are you, mm -hmm. are you out of your mind? If you are saying mm -hmm. these things in your head, there is a mental display of this on your face. And so it rubs off the person. And so we want okay. you to live actively with the person with a genuine concern, what we call a positive conditional concern for the person. And do not make and give cliches. You give cliches. Oh, it's all right. Time will heal. Oh, it's okay. Uh, there are many fishes in the sea. You know, you don't say things like that. If you say things like that, it is like, Dr. Atta was never the love of my life. 
but to the person, Dr. Atta is the love of my life. And so you don't say things like, oh, yeah, don't worry, time will heal. You will get somebody again. No, you allow the person to talk. Although we know that with time, the person is going to heal, you don't say it. You just allow the person to grieve and support the person. And then also ensure that the person does not want harm him mm -hmm. or the other person. So very important things that uh, we need to the interim when somebody is on that, going to, on that note. Uh, uh, uh. On that note, thank you very much. Let me hear what Madam Enyanam also has to say to communication. Madam Enyanam, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yes. 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 Thank you. So when can you please increase the volume on your machine? Or oh, your voice is a bit low. Hello. Can you hear yes, me? Yes, much better. Much better now. Go ahead. Okay. So uh, first of all, you need to accept the person the way he or he or she is. You don't want to be judgmental when the person is telling you about his or her problem. So you have to be non-judgmental to deal with the person. Let the person say whatever he or she has a feeling. And then if the person is crying, you must be able to uh, give tissue or if the person doesn't have tissue or anything, <laughs> help the person to uh, uh, cry. Uh, so you don't have to stop the person in the process of crying. And you have to let the person uh, know about uh, or get the person's information that we must listen attentively and know why the breakup happened. Because without understanding, you cannot help the person. So you must let the person know or uh, pour out everything that has happened in the relationship so that you can give solutions. And then know how the person is now coping. Which method is she or he using to cope? Is it helpful or not helpful? If it's not helpful, you try to help the person to use the helpful means. So some may result in eating too much or not sleeping at all or thinking of suicide. So you need to know how the person is coping so you can help the person get out of it. Mm, okay. And then you need not okay. hello. Yes, go ahead. Okay, so you need to um, show emotional intelligence. The person must not be crying whilst you are laughing. Uh -huh. So sometimes maybe your friend is telling you about his or her problem and the person is crying, but so you are just laughing at the person. Okay, so you know mm -hmm. the person to trust you and heal. So if you realize the person is crying, you must also show empathy. You must not be laughing while the person is crying during your session or whilst your friend is talking to you about breakup or something. So you need to uh, show emotional intelligence whilst dealing with people uh, going through the breakup. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. You know. need to know uh, if they are using the best coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. Um. Miss Ya uh Ya for please drop your Ike, is Ike still on? Ike has dropped off. Ike has dropped off. Ike has dropped off. So, um, like you are saying, we need to, if we want to communicate with somebody who is experiencing, we need to let normalize the situation. We need to empathize with that person, show emotional intelligence, uh, participate and listen actively to that person and, and not to judge while the person is expressing him or herself. And... Uh, Ask open ended questions that creates the possibility for the person to pour him or herself out. Okay, that's that's fine. Uh, Rita, I would want to ask you 
before 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 the heartbreak, are there some red flags that we could we could have seen that could have indicated to us that there is a looming danger ahead. So we need to take particular attention to it. Are there some signs, some basic signs that we need to look out for before even yes. the, 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 the laws happen? Yes. Um, there, there, there are lots of red flags that happen that sometimes we don't pay attention to for whatever reasons. But some of the red flags include um, frequent um, misunderstanding. You realize that you're always having a misunderstanding about any little thing in the relationship. It's, it, it seems you are not good enough for the person because the person criticizes you for any and everything that you do. You are always having conflicts in the in the relationship. Uh, there are unresolved issues. Sometimes you even want to be able to talk about something with a person and you are scared. So you hold back because you are afraid if you mention it, there may be an argument and they may leave you or whatever. So you'd rather not talk about it maybe that you realize that your partner is constantly belittling your efforts, belittling who you are. I mean, you want to start something and they are constantly telling you, you are not good for anything. Don't even try it. Sometimes indirectly they are telling you, I really don't like you. I'm just managing being in this space with you. It could also be um, trust issues. Um, if you realize that you always, um, either you or your partner is always suspicious. So there's always some suspicion. Somebody doesn't trust the other person. Uh, maybe they are hiding information. They are they are hiding their phone calls from you, hiding messages. And, and you are beginning to get suspicious. It's a red flag that things are not working well. Maybe some other interests are developing with your partner and somebody else in another place. If there is also um, persistent jealousy. You find that this person is extremely jealous, maybe over possessive of you. It may indicate that this relationship is not a healthy one for you. And therefore, it is likely that it can um, um, quickly end um, somewhere. Then I also talk about um, incompatibility when it comes to... Um, our values. Um, maybe you, depending on your life goals, um, you want to get to education wise, you want to get to PhD level. And you are in a relationship with someone who thinks that, for example, a woman shouldn't go beyond senior high or in, uh, first degree. It, it tells you that that relationship doesn't have a good future. Because it's either you are going to let go of your personal goals for the sake of that relationship and what is the relationship. And so if you realize that it's incompatibility with your values, what you consider important and what the person considers important, it could be a red flag that this relationship is not good for you. If you realize that your partner is never available emotionally for you, Anytime you want to have a discussion, you need their attention. They are always giving you excuses. They are not willing to spend time with you. They are always interested in something else or somebody else and not you. It, it tells you that, I mean, there is something that um, is not going right and you need to worry about. Then if you have, for example, um, frequent breakups, there are relationships that, one day the person says, um, it's okay, let's break up. And then the next day they come back and say, I'm sorry. Then two days after they come back and say, yes, I meant what I said last two days, let's break up again. And then they come back to apologize. Once you are experiencing this pattern in your relationship, you need to get ready for the final end. Maybe for your own health, you need to even assess um, the relationship. Is it helping you? You can even initiate the, the, the breakup, if it's the person is threatening you too much, 
with breakups and it's really affecting um i mean your your happiness or your joy as an individual and um, if you are realizing that you don't even care whether they are around or not you are indifferent you don't care whether they call you or not whether they pay attention to you, you just don't care anymore it tells you that there is something wrong with that relationship. Either you or your partner doesn't care anymore. There is something wrong with that relationship. And it's a red flag that you need to pay attention. For. If the person is abusing you verbally, um, emotionally, physically, even sexually and so on, it's a red flag that you need to pay attention to. Some of these things, if we can work on them and prevent them, they will actually prevent the heartbreaks from happening. Wow, that's quite a lot. So indeed, there are a lot of there are a lot of signs, there are a lot of red flags that should tell us that we need to be extra careful in the relationship in that we are. We need to really assess it. I are you are you with us on that issues still? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, but uh, it's, it's fluctuating. Would you like to make a oh, comment so far? Right. Or not that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, I think that con contextual issues are also important uh, in terms of uh, red flags. Uh, please can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Go ahead. Contextual issues are important. Um, and those contextual issues are there before the relationship begins. Right? So um, one of them has to do with the person's faith. Uh, if there is differences in their faith in terms of what they subscribe to, it may be the basis for a breakup. Uh, because that that really is the foundation to uh, whatever relationship they are going to have. People are influenced by their faith and what they believe in significantly. Please, can you still hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Very, right, very right, important. So those contextual issues are the things that are the relationship actually to do. Then also has to The principles of mm -hmm. So, if for example, you want to enter into some with someone who's the essence of, of their existence, the principles upon which they live their life is not, uh, uh, you know, mm -hmm. in, in that mm -hmm. it is the basis for, for the goal is here as the basis for the breakup mm -hmm. of the relationship. Mm -hmm. Then again, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. person mm -hmm. that the person mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. yeah. Going with their life. Where they are doing, they are where they want to get inside. So if it doesn't, you are not excited about it. You don't have to be where they are going. And that can become the basis for the breakup. That is also a red flag. Then the next red flag also has to do with, you know, a person that you struggle to plan with, you know, in terms of communicating ability to listen to each other, understand each other, and be able to make reasonable decisions, uh, you know, make some reasonable decisions together. That is also a red flag. Because sometimes people want to go into a certain relationship with someone, and, and they, they are completely on, on different levels. And with this point, age difference and educational background is important. Because if you want to have yes. some level of relationship wrong with someone who is significantly older than you, there will be generational problems. And as they age, then the gaps become wider because age itself has its own uh, issues with the person's perspective to life, the person's uh, ability to reason out things with you, the person's uh, priorities and stuff. It changes with age. For the younger uh, woman, realize as they age, why their priorities will come up. They are, you know, how the reason out is very different. So, it's also very important in terms of planning. 
Dr. Azusong, can you take the button? Dr. Azusong. Yes. This was also, we are still talking about the red flags, right? Yes. Uh -huh. So, yes, so I agree with all that they are, are, are saying. And, um, yeah, another red flag which I would want to, uh, I mean, my colleagues have already spoken about these other red flags. Every partner, you know what you are looking for in your, your other partner. You know what you are looking for. So once you do not have these things, there should be compromises because you cannot always get 100%. So know your level and live up to that. A lot of the red flags are the things that cause you to fight during your relationship. The same things that are causing you to fight are things that if they keep happening, you have to run away for your life. You will not expect that when you marry, these things will change. Or as the relationship ages, the things will change. They would never change. So these are the red flags that, and I cannot really particularly say one, two, three, four, five are red flags. I really do not subscribe to the fact that uh, age is just a number or certain particular criteria. I do not really subscribe to these things. I do not have fixed criteria or characteristics in a person. Know who you want. If your partner is a chain weed smoker, if your partner is a, and that is what you want, please live with it. But these things that cause you to fight during your relationship, if you can live with it, go ahead. If you cannot live with it, plead for your life. If not, that one day your partner would leave you. That is all I have to say with regards to the red flags. Thank you very much. So adding to that, those who did not pay attention to the red flags and ended up in your consulting room. Yeah. How did you see them? What, what was their composure? How difficult was it for them? Yes. So in such situations, what we are trying to do is to try to resolve the conflict. Because you now need to understand in details what resulted in that particular conflict and where the disagreement is. So we listen to one partner, find out what the disagreement is. What would you want from the other partner? What compromise would you need? In this particular instance, it may be really difficult to give answers because like I said, I really do not subscribe to the straight jacket rules and characteristics that a man must be like this, a woman must be like this, or these are the things that you should look out for. Then you speak to the other partner. Obviously, you would have your compromises and you would have things that you would want to look out for. Then we speak to the two partners to try to resolve the situation. In some instances, all you need is an apology and a willingness. And I, I, I mark my words again, a willingness to change. If there is that willingness to change, then the partner who is at fault we would help that person to change, to become the person that the partner wants to. These are the things that, and these are some of the techniques I use in my in my consulting room. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Madam Enyo, are you there? Madam Enyo now? Yes, I'm here. Good. Yes, thank I'm you. here. The network... Uh, network now we know we know that the network is a problem but my question is that after experiencing that heartbreak and all that i feel that i have i have recovered i'm fine now and so immediately i i want to go back into another relationship would you advise that i do that and what do i need to what do I need to do making that step? This is my is my sound clear? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So it depends on the individual. If the person is willing to move on, 
but the person must feel that they're going on to another level because most of the time, because of the heartbreak and loneliness, they fall into another trap. Uh, so the person must feel first um, and then make sure that the person pursues his or her goal. And his goal must, is very important. So the person must pursue other goals, not necessarily falling into another relationship which will result in a, uh, another problem. So most of the times, those who rush to other uh, relationships uh, face the same issue. So the best thing is to heal first. So in healing, they must have positive confessions. They must not see uh, all situations to be the same. They need to learn from the past relationship. Uh, it's not all bad. And sometimes it is very important that you break up for your own good. So breaking up is not so bad. Although it has some disadvantages, but there is advantage to it. So you look at the positive aspects of it. Then you learn from the relationship. So I've been with somebody for a long period or even for a short period. You may learn something from the other person. And then you use in the next relationship. So you have to look at it in the positive way. At least the person was not bad to tell you. And you have learned something good from the person. And you need to forgive before you move on to another person. If you don't let go of the negative emotion from the past relationship, you punish the other person who has not also offended you anyway. So you bring up the comments uh, or the trauma from another person. Forgive the person, and then don't revenge the old person. Let's go and then we move on. To the mm. So, on the I see. I see. Interesting. Thank you. We need to pursue other goals. We need to forgive. Have some forgiveness in your heart about the past. You learn from the past, and the lessons learned, you move on. Mm, I see. Um, Madam, Dr. Uh, Holmes, is there something you'd like to add at this point? Um, I'm sorry, my internet took me off, so I'm not sure what the topic is. What, what are you, what's the question well, right now? We discussed two issues. After, after experiencing the heartbreak, I okay. feel that I'm okay into going into a new relationship. Should I do that or I should not? Okay. If I should do okay. that, what are the issues that I need to look at and all that? And Enyonam suggested that, well, you need to pursue other goals at this point. You need to forgive yourself and the previous partner of what has gone on. You try to learn from the past and the lessons learned, you take them into the the future. Okay. Okay, so, um, yeah, I, I the, those are very valid points. Um. So to start with, I'll say don't rush into a new relationship. Um, experiencing heartbreak is just like having um, a physical wound on a part of your body. If you don't allow the wound to heal and you engage in another harmful behavior and that particular part of the body gets hurt again, the wound becomes more serious. Healing takes a longer time or it may even never heal depending on how bad it gets. So it's important that we don't jump into a new relationship um, so quickly after a breakup. It's, it's always good to give yourself time to reflect on what has happened. Um, did I do anything to, to lead to that? What can I do to prevent um, a similar event in the future? You, you need to allow your mind, your heart, your body, everything to recover from the stress of um, the breakup before you think of um, in another relationship. I would also add that uh, it can feel lonely. And so this is not the time to isolate yourself completely from people. At this time, it's good to have um, trusted family and friends around you who can help to reduce the feeling of loneliness and depression that you may feel 
because of the pain from the, the heartbreak. So don't isolate yourself because there are people who lock themselves um, indoors and will not want to talk to anybody at all. Yeah, it's okay to do that for a while, but don't let that drag. You need to connect with people that you can find support with because you're behaviors like turning to alcohol and um, because you may turn to alcohol temporarily to resolve an issue and it may end up becoming an addiction so you started with a breakup now there is a breakup there is a i mean your heart is hurt and then you end up having another addiction so you've created another problem for yourself is that you can channel your um, what energy into exercising and like Kenyonam said, pursuing other interests, um, whatever it is that can help you to focus. Um, they say the devil finds work for the idle hand. When your mind is not busy, it's easy to feel the pain much more than when you are busily engaged in other activities. The more you are engaged in other activities, the more people will even um, see what you are doing, encourage you, and all of that helps you to recover quickly from the, the pain of the heartbreak. So don't be in a rush. Give yourself time to grieve um, from the pain that um, you have gone through um, because of the, the breakup. Take a break. I mean, don't be in a rush. Life, life, life is not so much about um, being in a romantic relationship. There are other things. So take a break for yourself. Reflect and look at... Um, what can I do for myself? What can I do to be better? Take care of yourself. I mean, within that time, anything that you can do, eat well, dress well, look good, and focus on things that will bring you satisfaction and happiness. Um, for me, immediately after breakup, it's good to stay away from the person you broke up with temporarily for some time. And because it may be hard to deal with the loss of the breakup. If you are constantly talking to them, it may feel like you are still in a relationship when actually the relationship has ended. So you need to break away from those people and try to focus on yourself. See how you can help yourself out with the pain that you feel. But connect with people. Don't stay isolated alone. All right. Thank you very much. Don't stay isolated. Take a break. Reflect. In the reflection, um, Ike, Ike is back. Good. Would you like to add something? And so, uh, one of the most important things about healing. Yeah. Um, Cognitive, uh, you know, boost uh, of, the, of the information that is very important. The first is that um, your sleep was. Oh. I has dropped off again. Technology. <laughs> yeah. Generalize it. So, for example, all women are the same. They uh, do things. Um, people must think right, otherwise things get bad. The second thinking that really helps is that breakup usually is a blessing in disguise, and sometimes God's way of taking you away from someone uh, and and situations that are may even end in something very very terrible. You know, uh, about many years ago, about twelve years. Uh, about 12 years ago, I was working in one of the uh, intensive care units you know, in one of the big hospitals. And uh, they rushed the patient who, uh, who was unconscious. And the person had been shot in the head by the husband after some uh, exam conflict. So during the process, I was really thinking about it. Why, after 10 years of marriage, two kids, husband pitched the gun, shoot the, the woman in the head. And then uh, while I was thinking, I was even asking God why. Well, why this? And I felt God telling me that, you know, if he had broken up the relationship 10 years back, the lady would have asked God, why me? 
So if God had broken up the relationship 10 years back, the lady would have asked God, why me? Then this thought comes to my, came to my mind that sometimes our current disappointment is our future deliverance. Sometimes our current disappointment is our future deliverance. You know, so sometimes relationships fall apart and it's for our good. You know, sometimes it is it is good. So when people start thinking about things that it's really not bad anyway. You know, some relationships must end so that new things must happen, good things must happen. But because we are so emotionally attached to things and we have some expectations in our minds, it can cloud our judgment. So we need to think that sometimes breakup is a blessing in this guy. Then the third thinking that I think helps is that we need to think about the journey instead of the moment. Uh, we need to think about the journey instead of the moment. It is, um, it is an activity of the moment, not the entirety of your life. Right. And so if people think about the next thing, the next week, the next 15 years, then realize that it's just a moment thing. We shouldn't write off life or rights of a whole institution of relationship or marriage just because we are having momentary things. So momentary things can be painful. But when the thinking is about the long term, okay, now I've had a situation in my relationship. I need to move on. And I'm moving on into my life, into, into life itself. Then it becomes easier to deal with the pain as we deal with it. Because really, we've all had some you know pain in the past. By that doesn't mean that that is our life. It is a bad day, not a bad, a bad life. And I think that processing the events is very, very important. Then finally, let me add that we should journey with the right people. We should journey with the right people. Unfortunately, when people are going through some painful events, they actually relate to people who, are, who can't help them. They may talk to some friends who can't help them. They may even take solace in things that cannot help them. Uh, instead of listening to good music, they listen to sad music. Instead of reading good books, that would encourage them to listen to, uh, uh, you know, they read books that actually worsens their situation. So genuine with the right people in the right environment actually helps. And one of the people you may have to go to see is a professional, because professionals have been trained to be able to help that. So your thinking about events is really, really important. And, and to be able to move on. And sometimes people rubbish the whole institution of marriage because they've gone through some heartbreak. You know, it's not the problem, it's not marriage. It's the situation that you find yourself in. And so trying to completely tune off from an institution because it's getting perspective about the open system. Well, whilst I so let me see if I can read a few, a few of your comments that you've shared. Um, let me see. I have to go through. Aaron Apia Obain. The subject of discussion has been relevant, and would want to say thanks so much for addressing such concerns. Thank you, Aaron. Um, how does total silence from both partners lead to a heartbreak? Preferably, how long would you expect an affected partner to wait before moving into a new relationship? Um, I think that question has been partly answered, but uh, Dr. Holmes, can you note that question down for me so that you respond to it when I'm done with this? It says, oh. preferably, how long would you expect an affected partner to wait before moving into a new relationship? Mm -hmm. uh, keep the good job. Thank you, Aaron. Um, Awulana Unique, very good advice. Some people find their identity in relationships. So if they don't have it, they think their world is coming to an end. Yeah. Yes, but it is not so. Um, amen to, I think, uh, Aaron again. Our current failure 
is our future deliverance. Breakup is a blessing in disguise indeed. Okay, two more. Gloria, I have learned something new today. Thanks for this opportunity. You're welcome, Gloria. Um, Ellie, I know it helps to mull over the pain and grief, but for how long should one do so? Um, so, uh, as you saw, the, the second question is yours. So, uh, Madam Rita, Dr. Holmes, preferably how long should I take to get into the next relationship? Okay, so let me say that there's no um, fixed time. There's no fixed wait time for, um, I mean, to enter into a new relationship. Um, the, we are different. Our personalities are different. You need to know who you are. Some people can, I mean, don't even experience the heartbreak as much as, uh, for some people, you break up with them and it's like, okay, I hear you. And then they are moving on to whatever they have to do. Some people, you break up with them and actually their lives come to a halt. So you need to know yourself. But in, very important, heal. Take your time to heal. And when you realize that you are healed, you have forgiven your past, you are ready to move on, you are ready to start afresh. You know it and you would start. So there's no fixed time. It's, I won't say it's two weeks, one month, one day, 10 years. No, you, you have to decide as an individual. You, you should study your emotions and see if you are ready to start afresh again because you may be hurt again. Are you ready for that again? Um, that's a possibility. Um, so we get married. Relationships are just testing grounds for us. We are not too sure. So are you ready to give your life, yourself, your heart, your mind to another person? If not, give yourself more time to heal. Okay, thank you very much. Give yourself more time to heal. Madam Enginam, let me ask you this question. So, uh, the question is coming from uh, Mary. How about solutions to salvage the relationship? Mary wants to salvage her relationship. Uh, she's asking what, what solutions are there? I am thinking that uh, she should be looking out for the red signs, the red flags, communicate well. But for you, as the professional, what would be your advice at this point? Giving an overall, overall advice. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So, Dr. Azuson uh, also yeah. dropped hello. off. Hello. So, hello. yes, but can I'm back. Me? Yes, I'm back. can you I'm hear back me? With my phone. Okay, okay. The so, so, I'm back with my phone. So. Okay. I heard you when you said the second question was for me. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, but you let so, Enyanam finish. The second question. Uh, let Enyanam finish. Okay. okay. Please go ahead, Madam Enyanam. Okay, so, in therapy for people with breakup issues. Madam Enyanam, please go ahead. Hello. Yes. If you want to resolve the issue. Both must agree that they need to be together. So if one party doesn't want to be with you and you are forcing yourself, you will only be hurt at the end. So if both want to um, resolve the issue and come together, it's very easy. Uh, that means that you have to learn from your mistake. You need to forgive each other. You need to uh, learn from the past to forgive And then you need to accept the person back into your life. So if you're not willing to do all this, then both of you might agree. Sometimes in addressing the issue with marriage couples who want to divorce, sometimes you talk to them, but the one wants to leave, the other wants to stay. So both must agree. So it's not just you alone. The other person must be willing to still be with you. You can't force the other person because he or she has his own emotions 
he has the thoughts, he has his future plan. So if he sees you as somebody who cannot meet his needs and you are forcing yourself, you will be hurt. So it is best that both of you agree. But if you force yourself and still the person doesn't want to agree with you and be with you, you need to let go. You can't force people and you have plans. You need to focus on your positive, what you can do for yourself, your future plans. You have parents, you have relatives, you have other people that you need to support as well. You can't be forcing yourself for only one person, living your life based on whatever the person has to give you. So if you realize the person is not willing to change or can be with you, you need to let go because it can lead to violence and then abuse if you want, if you continue to force yourself in the relationship. That's what I can say for you. Hello. All Hello. right, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Madam Enyinam. Thank you very much for that response. I, I dropped off. I don't know whether you noticed that. The host yeah. himself dropped. I dropped the off. The host himself but, uh, is having network uh, issues. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Mary, Mary's hand had been up for a while. Mary, you can unmute yourself and uh, let's hear you. Today, I want us to run Thank you very time. much. Yeah, thank you very much and good, good afternoon all. It's been a very insightful uh, uh, program. I've learned a lot, but I just wanted to share why I asked for the solution. Actually, Mary has been married and she has celebrated her 50, 50 years of marriage. I wanted to hear that. So thank you very much. I wanted that solution to be given so that people are really aware that you can't force two people to stay together and that no matter what happens, as long as one says, I've had it and it's time to go, you are a counselor, you are whatever that you role you are playing in the lives of these two individuals, you should listen carefully and be able to tell who really wants in and who really wants out so that I can help them in that regard to come to terms with their situation. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mary. Uh, I have a new new messages here. Jones, Quesita boys are regular. Thank you for this insightful presentation. Please, how do I know I have healed from the pain and moved on? Uh, <laughs> I think that that was clearly explained by Dr. Holmes. Prosper Francis Kwame Day, if we don't set our priorities beyond our relationship, it will be very difficult for us to heal and move on after heartbreak. It will be better. It will be better when setting our goals and priorities in relationship that we factor in case of breakup into it as well. Well, that's your backup plan, uh, Prosper. Uh, Barbara says, how do you work on a boyfriend who acts as a victim? When you express your feelings and then give silent treatment, how do you work on a boyfriend who acts as a victim when you express your Adriana, please. Adriana, please mute yourself. Kevin, uh, Barbara, your question, how do you work on a boyfriend who acts as a victim when you express your feelings and then gives you silent treatment? Um, I'll let Madam uh, uh, Dr. Holmes respond to that. Dr. Holmes, are you there? Rita? Yes, um, I'm here. Just I didn't get a question. The question says, how do you work on a boyfriend who acts as a victim when you express your feelings and then gives you silent treatment? Oh, okay. So please, Calvin, uh, you can just agree. Sorry, sorry to, but Dr. Atta, sorry to uh, interrupt here, but I was just wondering if uh, the one who asked the question can explain uh, what, what does he mean by silent treatment? So that we put this in perspective. Okay, so Barbara. Dr. Holmes, I don't know if I'm in the right direction so that you can respond appropriately. Uh, 
<laughs> yes, you are in the right direction. Uh, Dr. Hama has spelled my name. The name is Dr. Hom. Hom, 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 yes. Dr. Hom, very good. Yes. Very good, Dr. Hom. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm almost about assassinating your, your dissecting your name. Sorry, <laughs> Doctor Hall. Okay, uh, Calvin and Katia, grateful for your time, facilitators. How do I deal with someone who has disappointed? Who has been disappointed by that one person she grew up with? She seems not to be recovered from her past, and it makes her feel insecure at times how do i cope not to forget dr home please respond to mary's uh barbara's question i'm thinking that silent treatment is that after playing the victim then he he he, he refuses to communicate any further on casano yeah i think so i think that's what she probably means so yes. for me people who keep going silent oh, on you and will not want to express them. It could be because they are immature. It could be because they just don't know how to act. They, they, they don't want to offend you. They don't want to say something to hurt you, so they'll rather go silent. And But the question is that the, the, the boyfriend is acting as a victim. And you think he's actually the perpetrator, but he's acting as a victim. And then after... He would rather go silent on you. He doesn't want to talk. And um, well, I think that you can give him some time to be silent. And then also, based on your discretion, when you think he's had enough, and um, create room for a discussion, create room to talk about the issue. Because, I mean, you can't remain silent forever. You need to express your views for people to know what it is that is really bothering you. Or they can, I mean, come in to help solve the problem or whatever. So for me, I'll say, um, give some discretionary time for the person to um, be silent. Uh, and then after a while, create room for a conversation. But if that is the pattern and you want to be with such a person, you need to be ready for a whole life of on and off. You go silent and come back and that kind of thing. And you need to assess it. Are you ready for that kind of situation? Because I think that sometimes when people have issues, we must encourage them to take help for themselves and by themselves, rather than thinking that being with them, we can help them to deal with the problems that they have had. Like someone was asking about having um, a partner who um, struggled with the person she's been with, so she has issues doesn't trust anybody, blah, blah, blah. I think that being in a relationship with them doesn't make us automatically, um, let me call it doctors or counselors or whatever. We need to encourage them to seek help for themselves. Let them work on themselves and become better rather than thinking that our relationship with them must cure them of whatever conditions that they are going through. Relationships don't naturally kill, cure it may help some people, but it doesn't cure um, some of the problems. And I just want to go back to Joan's question on how do you know you have overcome, um, I think he was asking about how do you know you've overcome the pain of breakup. I'll say one thing, um, if you realize that you have less intense emotion, like you don't feel sad, at least if not at all, the intensity has reduced dramatically. You are no longer angry. Your emotions are more balanced now. You realize that now when even you remember that ex, you are not overwhelmed with anger, with stress, with whatever. It feels normal. Then, then, then it's, and if you yourself have come to a point where you have accepted that th that relationship is over, and so I need to move on, then you can say that, yes, you are getting to that point. If you realize that you no longer have that, you know, constant edge to talk to the person, hear the person's voice, whatever. Do the things you used to do with the person. It tells you you are, you are healed you are, or you are healing. You are in good shape. 
you can allow yourself to start another relationship. So, yeah, I think that should do for now. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Holm. Uh, Dr. Eugene Patton has had his hand up. Dr. Eugene, can you unmute yourself and let's hear what you have to say? Oh, uh, he mistakenly touched that button. Today we have we have time issues, so we need to be on time, and we have less than a minute to go. Okay, so my facilitators, your final your final words, heartbreak. What can I final words? Final words in All dealing right. with it. Uh, so so no, let me start. Let no, me start exactly. with you. No, no, please. Sorry, sorry. I, I was having a little challenge. <laughs> Okay, please go ahead. Thank you. I joined late, forgive me about that. I joined late, but the silent treatment, I want to say something in addition to what my director has said. But I don't know the silent treatment you're talking about because one of the skills of anger management, some people, they use silent treatment. For example, the husband might decide not to talk when the wife is asking a question. I mean, they'll be mute. Have you eaten? No. Will you eat? No. <laughs> or they'll be nodding. And that's not the way they behave in the house. So I joined late and I didn't know the context in which the presenter used silent treatment because it's, it's, it's an, a coping strategy for anger. It's an anger management skill. But I don't know what you were talking about. That's the little that I had to say. You can get some little clarification there, I'll be glad. Well, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Patin, for your submission. But uh, unfortunately, we are almost out of time. And that issue has been addressed. And I did, I did, I did see that uh, uh, Barbara responded to say that the silent treatment means that he didn't pick a course. He would not pick a course on end. So that was the silent treatment oh, okay. he gave. But okay. I think that's, 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 that's silent treatment. Okay, that's fine. Yes. Thank you. And uh, Dr. Dr. Holmes uh, addressed it uh, appropriately. Okay, so final final closing remarks. Let me start with you, Dr. Azuson. Yes, thank you very much. Um Dr. Atta for this uh, presentation um, and facilitating this. I would want to conclude by saying that we need to always have it at the back of our mind that relationships are meant to make us better people. That relationships should complement each of us, our lives. Relationships are not to replace you and anybody's personal growth. And so if you are entering into a relationship with somebody, then your goal it should be that whatever it is, it should better the life of the person you are entering into the relationship with. But make sure that you have an honest conversation with your partner to know the intentions of the person entering into a relationship, the person's expectations, what the person can give and what the person wants to take. And I think that if you have this honest conversation about expectations and intentions and what everybody brings onto the table, you would not have a heartbreak if it happens. Importantly, once you have your expectations and intentions, also add up that if there is a break in any of your expectations or your duties, the consequence of whatever is going to happen. So if you know that you have broken one of your relationship rules and regulations, you already know what the consequences are going to be. And so when the consequences happen, you would not be what you would not be surprised. And I would want to end finally by saying that every relationship is unique. If you are taking advice, be careful where you take the advice from, and that no relationship has a manual that you have to, every relationship has its own unique manual because the two of you are individually different. And so the relationship is between the two of you and the manual should be created by the two persons and not from third parties. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Um, Madam Enyanam, your final words. So, hello. Okay. Hello. I'll add this. Uh, it's so we need to maintain self-care. Your network, your yeah. network, my goodness. <laughs> to maintain self-care. You need to eat well. And then sleep well. So you realize that you can all the things that you do. And no more. Hello, yeah, can you yeah. hear me? We can hear you, but we, we did not decipher what, what you said. <laughs> so I'm we saying only... that after breakup, you still have to it's it's no it's no it's no it's no better than earlier. It's no better okay. than earlier. Oh my goodness. Well, Dr. Holmes, your turn now. Please include okay. uh, professional help in your in your closing remarks. Okay, yes. So I'll say that breakup is not an end to life. It's just an end to a relationship. So don't don't make it an end to your life. Know that um, there are professionals out here to help you. I am a counselor. We have counselors. We have clinical psychologists, we have psychotherapists, there are even trust family members who could be of help. Don't suffer alone. Allow others to help you over. Don't be ashamed to ask for help. If you are experiencing heartbreak and it's difficult to cope and so on and so forth, don't be afraid. You are, it's not the end to your life, it's just an end to a relationship. I'll end with that. Thank you very much, Dr. Holmes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of today's program, but what I would conclude with uh, is that uh, all our programs, we record it and upload it on YouTube. So those of us who are first timers, just go onto YouTube, type in MHA webinar, plus the title of today's topic. And hopefully from Monday onwards, you would see it there and all others that we've done. Uh, we've had an interesting topic, I must say, an interesting topic. We've had a, a good discussion. There are red flags that you need to look out for. Some of them include when you have frequent misunderstanding, you are suspicious of each other, your values are not the same. He or she is emotionally unavailable for you. Frequent breakup, last week you broke up, you come back, break up, you come back. There is abuse, verbal, sexual, physical, emotional. That's if your faith don't match to each other, if there is difficulty communicating, this and more are red signs for you that you need to talk and address them before going forward. Other than that, they are indication that somewhere along the line, you might experience heartbreak and loss. That being said, if somebody close to you experiences it, for, for you who is not experiencing it, you could help that individual one way or the other to go through that pain. What you can do is to let understand that it's a normal thing that we all experience it. You empathize with that individual. They need the opportunity to tear themselves out, pour their heart out. So you should ask open-ended questions for them to talk and talk more. And you should listen actively. In that lesson activity, you need to be emotionally intelligent. Your emotions should not be different from what you are saying, neither should it be different from what they are expressing. And should not be non, you should be you should not be judgmental in your comments, in your questions, and in your responses. That way you are inhibiting what they want to say. So that is the least way that we can also help friends and colleagues, brothers and sisters who are experiencing that. After all the troubles, would you want to go back? The question is, have you healed? Make sure that you take time to heal. Reflect over the past. What are the lessons that you've learned? Have you forgiven yourself? Have you forgiven your partner? If you don't forgive your partner, there's no point going into a new one because you carry it 
along. Mm -hmm. You carry mm -hmm. it along. Make sure you've healed first before mm -hmm. you can move on. And in all that, mm -hmm. Isaac yeah, summed it up to tell us that our current uh, failure so yeah. You said it's to be future deliverance. Yes. Uh, Failing in this relationship does not mean that that's the end of the world. Perhaps it's a blessing in disguise that that you never know, but only that you have to heal from, from the lessons learned and move on. On that note, let me say a very big thank you to our facilitators, Dr. Ols, Dr. Azusong, Dr. Isaac Newman, Arthur, uh, Ms. Inyanam. Thank you so much. It's been wonderful. Our uh, internet and technology didn't help us that much today. I myself, I had to draw, I dropped off along the line, but we managed to survive. So I want to thank them so much for their support. And you, our yeah, participants, always we'll thank you it. because you are always here with us, making this thing interesting with your comments and your questions. There are a lot of them, but unfortunately, I can't read. I apologize sincerely that we can't read as much as we want to. So, on that note, thank you very much for coming. Have a blessed weekend. And in case you need help, there is help out there. Go into any of our health facilities and get some help. Thank you very much. The program has ended. Find somebody who manage the place. That's all. Matthias, can you please? I'm surprised that you keep your microphones on to distract others. So, yeah. Matthias, I'm a bad Gulliver. Thank you very much. The program has ended and have a nice weekend.